Hello everyone, and welcome to a new feature here on the Bearded Brothers Sports Channel? Thingy? Yeah, I like thingy. This is something that we're going to start calling Trade Dissections. What exactly is a Trade Dissection? Well, it's mostly going to be me, Bearded Brother Matt, breaking down a trade and taking a look at what it was and where it went. I have a boatload of hockey ones that are already researched and done, but I do plan to branch out into the NFL and NBA as well. Why no MLB? Frankly, because they can't trade their draft picks. That makes them less interesting in my mind. So let's answer a few questions that I'm sure are going to come up. First, did I steal this from Steve Dangle Glenn and the people over at TSN? No. This is more of an homage, and it's also, they were an inspiration. I intend to do NFL and NBA as well, uh, and also I plan to do mine a little differently than his. There won't be as many st hard stats in mine as Steve likes to put in his. That said, anything Steve's done, I'm not going to redo here. So if you want to take a look at some of the big ones he's done, like the Wayne Gretzky trade, go over there, give him a, you know, a look at and a like, and, uh, you know, hey, they do good work. Much better than mine, because I'm a very novice editor. Now, how often will these come out? Okay, when I feel like it, alright? Uh, frankly, there isn't a real timetable. I do have a bunch researched, as I said, for the NHL, but I feel like both the NFL and NBA are going to require a bit more research time that, frankly, I don't have at the moment. Also, and like I said, I don't want to do ones that have already been covered by someone else. So, let's dive in now. The trade we're going to look at today involves six Stanley Cups and five of them for one team. Let's go ahead and call it the Ulf Samuelson trade. Now, for a lot of you, you don't know who Ulf Samuelson is. The only thing you know about him is when I mentioned him on the podcast and that he got knocked out by the Albanian assassin, Ty Domi. He was an agitator. Played 1,080 games in the NHL and racked up 2,453 penalty minutes. We all know what he was out there was doing. Now, he did have 333 total points, which I only mention because it's half of 666, and I find that kind of thing funny. So, drafted by the Hartford Whalers in the fourth round, and established himself as a pretty rough-and-tumble player fairly quickly, amassing penalty minutes like they were candy, and he was going around door-to-door -door on Halloween. Were the Whalers any good during this time? Actually, yeah. In his first full season, 85-86, they made it to the Adams Conference Final, losing to Montreal. The next season, they finished first in the division, and then lost in the semifinals. Then kind of began a slow decline into mediocrity. So, in 90-91, the Whalers, kind of wanting to get a spark, made a trade with the Penguins that goes as follower. The Whalers trade Ulf Samuelson, defenseman Grant Jennings, over here, and Ron Francis to Pittsburgh for a package that was as follows. John Cullen, Jeff Parker, and Zarly Zalapsky. Overall, not bad. However, looking at it, you'd probably look at that and go, oof, man, Hartford didn't get anything back out of that well that would be the simple answer sadly silly truth generally resists a simple narrative so since i'm already over here let's look at the hartford side and i kind of want to make pittsburgh wait so how did they do well colin played 13 games and had 16 points eight of them goals after the trade that's pretty good then there's jeff parker Eh, zero points. Never played for another NHL team. Zalapsky, on the other hand, played 11 games and had six points. For a defensive-minded defenseman, that's also pretty good. Did those two end up helping Hartford to bigger heights? Not really. They both had good seasons to follow up the trade, 
but Hartford was desperate to stop a losing skid that wasn't stopping, and so trades were made. They gave away John Cullen to Toronto straight up. What did they get back? A 1993 second round pick that would be used on Vastemil Krupa. Now, what did they do with that pick? Well, they didn't use it. They ended up trading it away. They packaged that pick along with Sergei Makarov, a 1993 first round pick, sixth overall, used on Viktor Kozlov, and a 1993 third round pick, 58th overall, used on Vili Peltonen, and they sent it to the San Jose Sharks. What did they get for all that stuff? The second overall pick. Who knows who the second overall pick in 1993 was? Stop guessing, I'm going to tell you. Chris Pronger. Oh my goodness, that was a fantastic deal for them. Or it would have been, had Chris Pronger been good for Hartford. Sadly, he was not. Because when you're the second overall pick, there's a lot of pressure put on you to win. And when you don't win, people begin to look at you funny. There's not a lot of guys in that locker room to teach Pronger how to win, so eventually, they traded him away. Straight up! to St. Louis for Brandon Shanahan. This trade actually worked out well for both players as Chris Pronger would go on to have a Hall of Fame career. Brandon Shanahan would continue to put up good numbers for Hartford and still go on to be traded and have a Hall of Fame career. He was packaged with Brian Glenn and sent to the Detroit Red Wings for a package that included Paul Coffey, a 1997 first round pick, 22nd overall, and Keith Primo. So, Paul Coffey played all of 20 games for the Whalers and got traded. They sent him a third-round pick, 62nd overall, and they pushed that to the Philadelphia Flyers for Kevin Holler, a 1997 first-round pick, 23 overall, and a 1997 seventh-round pick, 169th overall. So, Kevin Holler. Kevin Holler was a mean defenseman, and he was there to not score points, and he didn't. <laughs> he was however traded, packaged with Stu Grimson, sent to the Anaheim Ducks for a 2000 fourth round pick, 108th overall, and Dave Carpa. At this point, I kind of have to acknowledge something. You see, things in Hartford were not good. So, after the 96 season, they packed up, they left, and they went to Carolina and became the Hurricanes. I think that turned out well for them. We'll get to that in a bit. So, back to the Holler trade. Now, Dave Carpa. Carpa was a defenseman. Struggled with injuries his first two seasons in Carolina. Found his stride in his third season, though, and piled on the penalty minutes like I piled toppings onto my ice cream. Never traded, though, so his part of this is at an end. That round four pick was traded, so on we move. They traded that round four pick, packaged it with a round five, 147th overall, and an eighth round pick, 244th overall, to the Atlanta Thrashers, for a 2000 fourth round pick, 97th overall, where they drafted Nicholas Walling. This turned out to be a good pick. He was never a superstar, but he was a solid defenseman for the club for nine seasons. They eventually traded him. They sent him a 2010 fifth round pick, 127th overall, to look at San Jose for a 2010 second round pick. 53rd overall that they used on Mark Alt. However, before he ever played a game for the Canes, his AHL rights would be traded to Philadelphia, along with Brian Boucher for Luke Pither, who never played a game in the NHL. So that's kind of where that string ends, right in the colon. Kind of fizzled out there. But there's more to do, so let's jump back up here. Remember in the Kevin Holler trade, we got that first round pick, 23rd overall? Yeah, they traded that. 
they went ahead and sent that to, hey, look, it's the San Jose Sharks again. Holy cow. They love to make deals with the Sharks, don't they? They went ahead and they got, for that pick, a 1997 second-round pick and a 1998 third-round pick, 28th and 71st overall, respectively. Now, this is something that draft experts will tell you to do. The odds of hitting on a draft pick after about the first 15 picks are pretty slim. So trade it away! Especially because there's only a five-pick difference between 23 and 28. More picks means more chances to hit. More chances to hit, higher odds. It's simple math. So, did they hit? Well, with that second round pick, they picked Brad Day. Day. You know what? I'm going to leave it on the screen and you can read it. And if anybody knows how to pronounce that, go ahead and let me know. Because I'm not even going to make that attempt. Uh, sadly for him, never really worked out. He only ever played nine games. Eh. In fact, they're the only nine games he ever played in the NHL. Now, that round three pick was Eric Cole. That one they hit on. He played quite a few seasons for the Canes, six of them, and wound up with some pretty good stat lines. In fact, they were good enough that he got traded. Straight up to the Edmonton Oilers for Yoni Pitkanen. Pitkanen was a solid defenseman who could help in the offensive zone and played five seasons with the Canes. But that's where this string ends. Thankfully, this one was a little more positive. Oh, yeah, what about that seventh rounder? Andrew Merrick never played a game in the NHL. Meh. All right, back up further. Remember when they got coffee up here? Yeah, right there. Bloop. They also got a first round pick. That would be Nico Celios. Meh. He played all of two games in the NHL and was never traded, so whiff. What about Keith Primo? Now, Keith Primo did have a little, several good seasons for both the Whalers and the Hurricanes. So, they decided to see what they could get by trading him. And, buddy, did they do good on this one. They traded Keith Primo, a 2005th round pick, to the Philadelphia Flyers. Oh, yeah. For Jean-Marc Pelletier... A second round pick, 63rd overall, and Rod the Bod, Brenda Moore. That's it. Guess what? Carolina wins this trade. Period. Rod the Bod, Brenda Moore, wound up playing 10 seasons for the Canes and helped lead them to a Stanley Cup in the 05 06 season. After he retired, he stayed in Carolina, and he's now the head coach of the team. They're a dangerous team every year in the East, and I'm sure it won't be long before they hoist another Stanley Cup. This time, Brenda Moore's name will be on there as coach instead of player. Oof. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what happens to Pelletier and that round two pick, because quite frankly, Brenda Moore causes this to be a win. What a coup for Carolina. But that being said, what actually did happen to Jean-Marc Pelletier in that second round pick? Well, he never actually played for the Hurricanes, and he'd be traded with a conditional pick in 2003, where the conditions were ultimately not met, to the Phoenix Coyotes for Patrick DeRocher. DeRocher played all of two games for the Canes and put up a 901 save percentage, and that was it for his NHL career. That second round pick, they traded. They packaged it with Nolan Pratt. A first round pick in uh, 2000, 14th overall. A second round pick in 2047th overall and sent that to the Colorado Avalanche for Sandis Ozolinch and a second round pick, 32nd overall. Now, Ozolinch was a good defenseman who had decent offensive potential. That second round pick, they used it on Thomas Kirka. Kirka... Mm, only ever played 17 NHL games. Kind of a waste. Ozolinch never really panned out, and quite frankly, I don't think he was worth what they gave up. However, did they get anything back when they traded him? Because he was traded with Byron Ritchie to the Florida Panthers for a package that was Kevin Adams, Brett Heideken, Thomas Malik and a 2003 conditional second-round pick. 
again, conditions were never met. Florida keeps the pick. So, let's talk about this. Kevin Adams, he was a decent center. Um, you know, serviceable player. Never actually set the league on fire. And was traded straight up to the Arizona Coyotes for Dennis Seidenberg. Brett Heideken. Heideken was a decent defenseman. Solid. And he played quite a few seasons on the blue line in Carolina. And then there was Thomas Malik. Thomas Malik was the guy who was supposed to be the sweetener, and he never really panned out. However, while he didn't make an impact plane, he did in a trade. Thomas Malik was baggaged with a 2004 third-round pick and sent to the Anaheim Ducks for Martin Gerber. In 05-06, Gerber started 60 games in nets for the Canes and put up a record of 38, 14, and 6. The 6 would be ties, as that was a thing back then. He also had a 906 save percentage. Those are some great stats. And all right, he won the Cup in 05, 06. This is the only season he played for Carolina, but I think both he and they are perfectly happy with how that one worked out. And that is the end of the string for Jeff Parker. Everything that they got from him, that's where it ends. So let's go back up and take a look at what they did with Zarly Zalapski. Because we know Jeff Parker never got traded. Zalapski. So, Zalapski had four good seasons in Hartford. We have to go back in time. They're Hartford again. He actually had a 20-goal season. And for a defenseman at the time, that was amazing. And then they traded him. They packaged him with Michael Nylander. Hey, that's the father of current Leaf superstar Willie Nylander. Awesome! And James Patrick and sent that to Calgary. For Ted Drury, Paul Ranheim, and Gary Souter. Now, this is about to get wild, so hang on. Drury was a serviceable center. Never set the league on fire or anything. Also never traded, ends there. Paul Ranheim, on the other hand, now he was traded. He played multiple seasons for both the Whalers and Hurricanes. His trade was straight up to the Flyers, for a 2002 eighth round pick that they never used. They would package that with three other late round picks and send that to the Lightning for a 2003 fourth round pick, Matej Trojowski. I'm pretty sure I screwed that up. Don't care. He uh, never played a game in the NHL and ends that string. Gary Suter had a nearly 20 year career in the NHL but never played a game for either Carolina or Hartford. In fact, as soon as they got him, they went ahead and flipped him. They packaged Suter, Randy Cunningworth, and a third-round pick, 61st overall in 95, and sent that to Chicago for Frantesque Cousera and Jocelyn Lemieux. So, both of them were traded, but Kusera turns into a weird interwoven nightmare, so we'll do him last. Jocelyn Lemieux, let's go ahead and tidy him up. Jocelyn Lemieux, now, um, he was not on the ice to make friends. He was on the ice to be a bad time for other people, and he did that with gusto. He would eventually be traded with a 98 second round pick, 39th overall, to the New Jersey Devils for Jim Dowd, and a 1997 second round pick, 51st overall. Dowd was, well, he hung around the league for a while. His best season was in Minnesota with the Wild in 01 02 when he had 43 points. Ah, it's not really important to the dissection. I just felt like you needed to know that. So Dowd, he would be packaged with, hey, there's where Kusera comes back in, along with a Frantes Kusera, Jim Dowd, a 1997 second round pick, 34th overall, and sent to Vancouver for... Jeff Brown, and a 1998 third-round pick. Now, this was Jeff Brown near the end of his career, far from the guy who you could count on every year to score 20 goals like clockwork. 
So they actually traded him to the Toronto Maple Leafs, straight up, for a 1999 fourth round pick, 121st overall, which they flipped to the Nashville Predators for Eric Ficard. Now, Ficard was a goalie who was selected in the first round by the Toronto Maple Leafs, never lived up to being selected in the first round. Career save percentage, 897. Ugh. So let's go back up because that's kind of where it ended. You know that second round pick that they got with Jim Dowd? Well, they flipped it. Along with Nat Domincelli, Glenn Featherstone, a 19, and the 1998 third round pick they got in the Jeff Brown when they got that and they flipped Dowd. Okay, they sent that whole package to the Calgary Flames for Steve Chason and a 1997 third round pick. Now, this is the part where we have to sadly say this ends in tragedy. You see, Chason played three seasons with the, the her Carolina Hurricanes. And after being bounced from the playoffs in the first round by the Boston Bruins, he was headed home from a team party in his pickup truck. He crashed the truck and would die on impact. He left behind a wife and three kids. The Hurricanes would establish a team award named after him for leadership, perseverance, determination, and dedication. No member of the Canes has worn his number three, though the number hasn't officially been retired. Chaseland's former teammate Corey Stillman took the Stanley Cup to his memorial in Peterborough, Ontario, after Carolina won it all in the 0506 season, so that Chason could have time with the Cup. Rest in peace, Steve Chason. Sad as it is, we have to move on, or we'll never get done. 1997 third round pick was Francis Lassard. Never played a game for the Canes. Flipped his AHL rights to the Flyers for a 1999 eighth round pick, 237th overall. They used on Antti Jokola, who never played a single game in the NHL. So that's the end of everything you're going to get for the wonderful Hartford Whalers. How did they do? I think they did all right. You got a Stanley Cup out of it. In fact, you got two pieces that gave you that Stanley Cup out of it, and one of them is still with your organization and is your head coach. But uh, remember how I said there were six cups? We've covered one of them. That's right. Pittsburgh won the other five. Let's go ahead and take a look at what they got. Remember, they got Grant Jennings, Ron Francis, and Wolf Samuelson. And immediately the season they got them won the Stanley Cup. Now, this is where Ulf would earn his reputation, these playoffs, because he would have a hellacious knee-on-knee -knee hit to Cam Neely that would knock Bam Bam out of the game, the playoffs, and most of the next season as the bruise began to ossify. Not good. In fact, it shortened Neely's career and ensured Ulf Samuelson the enmity of everyone who lives in Boston until the end of time. So, 91-92 then, onwards. Guess what? They won the cup again. Back-to-back -back wins. They would unfortunately not duplicate in 92-93, and eventually began to look to make changes. Grant Jennings was sent out in 94-95, straight up to the Toronto Maple Leafs for Drake Barahowski. Barahowski struggled in Pittsburgh and eventually left, but not via trade, so that finishes him up. Ron Francis, never traded. Stuck around for a long time, put up a lot of good numbers. He'd eventually leave elsewhere. Ulf Samuelson, though, was traded, also in the 94-95 season. They packaged him with Luke Robitaille and sent him to the New York Rangers for Sergei Zubov and Peter Nedved. Look, Zubov was a star in the league. Most people don't remember him, but you should. He was a defenseman who scored 66 points in 64 games after the Pens acquired him. Striking while the iron was hot and thinking he couldn't possibly keep that up, they traded him to the Dallas Stars for Kevin Hatcher. That's a deal they'd probably like to have back because Zubov went on to have a fantastic career in Dallas. Hatcher not so much over in Pittsburgh. He was eventually traded to the Rangers for Peter Popovich. 
eh, kind of all meh. Peter Nedved, immediately after getting him, he threw up 45 goals and a 99-point season. Holy cow. He followed it with a 33-goal, 71-point season. And the Rangers went, we may have made a huge mistake. Can we have him back, please? And the Penguins said, sure. And they packaged him with Sean Pronger and Chris Tamer and sent him to the Rangers for future considerations, Harry York and Alexi Kovalev. Now, future considerations. Man, most of the time they're nothing. That appears to be the case here. If there was something, I couldn't find it. My bad. Harry York played all of two games and vanishes. Alexei Kovalev. Now, he was the man down in Pittsburgh for quite a while. And then the Rangers, eventually sensing they, uh, sensing they made another boobo, went ahead and said, mm, can we have him back, please? And Pittsburgh obliged by sending Kovalev, Dan LeCouture, Yanni Lockannon, and Michael Wilson to New York for cash, which you're not allowed to do anymore. Rico Fada, Richard Linton, Mikhail Samuelson, and Joel Bouchard. Rico Fada, former sixth overall pick, never lived up to being the sixth overall pick. Richard Lintner played 19 games for them, never did anything else. Joel Bouchard played seven games, gone. Mikhail Samuelson never lived up to it until he was traded. They packaged him with a 2003 first-round pick, third overall. It wound up being Nathan Horton. A 2003 second-round pick, 55th overall, that wound up being Stefan Meyer. And traded him to the Florida Panthers for a third overall pick, and that was 73 overall, and the 2003 first-round pick. First overall. So that third-round pick... That's used on Daniel Carcillo. Most notable for having 324 penalty minutes in a single season. And in 06 07, he'd be traded to Arizona, along with a 2008 third round pick that's 90th overall. And the Pens would get back Georges Larocque. He played two seasons in Pittsburgh and played the role of Punchman. Now, why did I make a big deal out of this? Oh, right, because with the first overall pick, they selected Mark Andre Fleury, the flower generational goalie two years after selecting him they would again find themselves with the first overall pick and would select the generational player known as Sidney Crosby and they would soar upwards from there eventually winning cups in 07 08 08 09 and 15 16 Fleury was the primary goalie in the first one and was injured for the second one but came back in enough time to help in the playoffs and he split time in the net in 15 16 I kind of think that he helped win all three cups. So what did we learn? Quite frankly, that if you're giving up one of the best players, in fact, two of the best players, you're often going to be the team that loses. Such is the case with Hartford. But even though they lost, they still kind of won because they got a cup. Does not match the fact that they got five cups. They got five cups over in Pittsburgh. Well, I hope this worked out well. We'll see. For now, enjoy yourselves. Be safe. Have fun. Bearded Brother Matt, out.